Hello, I'm Tom Christensen of Neurochrome, and welcome to my lab. In this video, I'll talk about the importance of cleaning flux off the circuit board after you're done soldering. This is especially important in circuits where you care about the DC performance, um, so for example, the DC offset. And um, such circuits include like DC servos, um, where the purpose is to null out any DC offset, and uh, also high gain amplifiers, for example, um, phono stages. Because what can happen is that if you have a, high, a large DC offset on the input of a high gain amplifier, you will have a large DC output voltage of that amplifier. And that in turn can set up uh, trouble down the signal chain. For example, if you plug in a couple of volts to a power amp that's DC coupled, you probably blow your speakers. Um, so it's a good idea to clean the flux off the circuit board and in some cases it's definitely needed. Um, so to demonstrate this I've set up a test circuit that has four identical parts. So each of the parts is a dual op amp. The op amp is a precision uh, op amp by Texas Instruments. It's the OPA2277U. Uh, so it has very, very good uh, DC specs, and it's fairly pricey, so you kind of want to get the performance that you pay for when you use these. Um, each of these four identical circuits is set up as um, two amplifiers uh, with a gain of two. So I expect the output uh, offset voltage of those of each of those amplifiers to be within the range of plus minus 120 microvolts. So um, what makes these four sections uh, different is that they were assembled with solder that had different flux in it. Um, the first circuit I soldered up with uh, water soluble flux. As the name indicates, water soluble flux can be removed with water. Um, that makes it really nice to work with in a scenario where you know you're going to clean the flux off the board. And um, the drawback of it is that you have to remove the flux. Uh, otherwise, you get these leakage currents that I mentioned earlier. The second circuit, or the second section of the circuit, um, was soldered up with rosin mildly activated, or RMA flux. Um, that's one of the more common flux types in DIY circles. And one nice thing about it is that you don't technically have to remove the flux off the circuit board, but it's generally considered a good idea because it is mildly um, hydrophilic. So it, it will attract water and over time can cause corrosion. Uh, but I mean, if you live in a dry climate, you might not be as concerned about it. Um, it can be removed or dissolved generally with isopropyl alcohol or IPA. And if you have a little bit of residue left off or left over on the circuit board after the IPA, just rinse them off with uh, hot water. That usually works. The third section of the circuit board was built with no clean flux. As the name indicates, no clean uh, flux doesn't technically have to be removed. Um, it's the residues tend to be small in amounts and then also they tend to be inert so they shouldn't react with anything in the atmosphere. Um, the drawback of the no clean flux is that they're kind of hard to remove. Um, in order to dissolve them you need special solvents such as this uh, flux cleaner by uh, MG Chemicals. You can find um, them at your local electronic supply store. Um, there's also a brand called Flux Off, which is pretty good. I've used those in the past. Um, the drawback of these cleaners is that they tend to not ship by airmail uh, because of the flammability issue. Uh, so um, you, you'll probably have to find it locally or find a supplier that can ship by ground shipping. Um, the harsh solvents in this stuff uh, are not particularly healthy, I don't think. Um, don't breathe the fumes, don't smoke around it, that kind of stuff. Um, so be a little careful when you work with it. And just like with the RMA flux, if you have a little bit of residue left over after you're done cleaning with the flux cleaner, they can usually be removed with water. 
So the final section of the circuit is soldered with um, a new, I think, type of uh, no clean flux from Chipquick. Um, it's unique in that it is water washable. And um, I was kind of confused with, with how is this different from water soluble, but um, water soluble you have to remove because the residues will react with stuff in the atmosphere, including water, um, and cause nastiness. Whereas the water washable, the residue is supposedly inert. And so it doesn't react with anything and it can be removed with hot water. Um, it has to be 60 degrees C or hotter, um, but that's, you know, typically around the, the temperature of hot tap water. Um, that'll usually work. And I've tried it. It works, it works quite well. It washes off the board nicely. Uh, what I don't like so much about it is that the residues uh, tend to be a bit messy. It seems to be like a bit greasy. Um, so it makes a bit of a mess on the board. So I prefer to clean it off. So anyway, enough talking. Let's get to the measuring. I have the circuit powered by an uh, HP 6237B benchtop power supply. Um, I really like these older uh, HP power supplies. They're rock solid. Um, the output voltage of each of the sections of the circuit I'll measure with a uh, HP 34401A uh, six and a half digit benchtop multimeter that I have going in the background here. So I have it hooked up to the output of the first circuit already. So that's the one with the, um, what was the flux? That was the water soluble flux. And it measures a little over three millivolts of DC offset. And as I mentioned earlier, I was expecting more like plus minus 120 microvolts. So it's off by roughly a factor of 30. So hopefully that'll improve by the time I get the flux washed off the board. I expect that it will. So let's look at the output of the second circuit. So I'll just swap it over and we'll wait for the meter to settle a little bit. It takes a couple of seconds. Um, and it looks like it's settling around 10 microvolts. So that's within spec. Uh, so that's excellent. Uh, I had actually not expected that. I had expected that the RMA flux would cause a little bit of leakage current, uh, but that apparently doesn't seem to be the case. Um, who knows if that changes over time. Uh, I soldered the circuit up this morning, so um, it could change over time. But at least for now, it looks really good. Let's look at the third circuit. All right. So let's wait for the meter to settle here a little bit. So it looks like it's about uh, 30 microvolts, 33 and a half microvolts of DC offset. Um, the difference between that and the previous circuit could just be uh, variability between the uh, two op amps and theoretically also in the resistors, but mostly the op amps. Uh, but this is certainly within spec, so that's good. Um, let's see the output of the fourth circuit. I'll just wait for the meter to settle here a little bit. And right now it's looking at about minus 150 microvolts. So that's not horrible, um, but I don't quite feel I got the performance I paid for because it was supposed to be below minus 120 or plus minus 120 rather. Um, so it's off by a little bit. I expect that to clean up once I get the flux off of there. So that's the one with the chip quick, uh, no clean water washable flux. So as I mentioned earlier, um, there are four identical circuits and each of them contains two op amps. So I have two amplifier circuits per section. I figured you probably didn't want to sit through me measuring all of them. So I have them have the output voltages tabulated right here. Now let's go clean the flux off the board. All right, so we're back in the lab and I have a board here that's free of flux. Thanks in part to the uh, MG Chemicals flux remover and they did not sponsor this video, uh, but uh, 
I used that to get rid of the RMA and the no clean flux. And then I used hot water to get rid of the water washable and the water soluble fluxes. Uh, some of you might be a little concerned about water and electronics, but most components are hermetically sealed so they can handle being washed. Uh, you do want to double check with the data sheet to make sure that you're not washing a component that cannot tolerate being washed. And some of these components commonly are uh, switches, potentiometers, relays, and that sort of thing. So double check the data sheet. And also if you use fancy components like polystyrene capacitors, then you do want to be careful with the solvents because those capacitors will disappear with the solvent. So anyway, without further ado, let's measure some output offsets. So I have the voltmeter hooked up to the first circuit. That was the one that was soldered with the uh, water soluble flux. And previously that measured minus 3.13 millivolts. Now it measures 60 microvolts. So that's a factor of 50 improvement just by cleaning the flux off. The second circuit, let's hook that up. And let's wait for the meter to settle here. Just one quick note while we wait for that. Um, to get the water off the board after I rinsed it, then you know, I just shake the water off as best I can and blow the rest off with some compressed air. And then I dry the board in an oven at about 65 degrees C for like 15 minutes. That usually takes care of it. And obviously I've allowed the board to cool so that we only see the difference in flux and not you know, what the offset is when the part is hot. So anyway, um, now we're down in the single digit microvolts, 8.5 microvolts right now. Uh, it's before it measured about 10 microvolts, so it's not a huge improvement, but maybe slightly lower. Maybe by a factor of two. Um, so not a huge improvement with the RMA flux, but worth having. And now try circuit number three. That was the one with that was solder with no clean flux, and that previously measured about 34 microvolts in offset. And now it looks like we're at 36. Yeah, 36.4 microvolts. So maybe slightly worse, maybe about the same. Um, measuring, you know, single digit microvolts is a challenge. So let's look at the fourth circuit, wait for the meter to settle. That was the one that measured 155 microvolts before, and now we're at 65. So a factor of two improvement simply by cleaning the flux off. And I'll measure the remaining four channels and provide a table with the uh, measured values. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching. If you did find it informative, please click the like and the subscribe buttons below and you'll get notified when I post more videos. Thanks.